Picture this, you're at the vanguard of a new horizon in economic opportunity. You run an online exchange, which practically all of the world's cryptocurrency flows through. You're on top of the world at the center of the universe. And thanks to some crappy programming, your system deletes $300 million. The house of cards collapses. And that's getting off easy compared to some of the stories we know. When machines are in charge of everything from money and medicine to missiles, a single line of code can be the difference between life and death. I've made some very poor decisions recently. On February 25th, 1991, during the Gulf War, a Patriot missile defense system in Duran, Saudi Arabia failed to intercept an incoming Iraqi Scud missile. The projectile struck a U.S. Army barracks, killing 28 soldiers. The system had been operating continuously for more than 100 hours, exposing a software defect in the weapon control computer's time conversion. Because time was kept as an integer and converted to a real number with only 24-bit precision, the range gate calculation became less accurate the longer the system ran. The Defense Department responded by telling all of the Patriot batteries to not leave the systems on for a long time. They never said what a long time was. This conversion error caused the Patriot system clock to drift by just a fraction of a second during its non-stop days-long runtime, but that was enough. On that fateful day, the accumulated error had become large enough that the system searched the wrong location and was thus unable to engage the incoming projectile. According to investigators, periodic rebooting would have reinitialized the clock and undone the problematic drift. The Army had actually begun distributing a software fix days earlier, after studying data from the field and realizing that the system's accuracy already began to falter after eight hours of continuous operation. Unfortunately, corrected software only reached Iran a day after the fatal strike. When a flawed software design meets improper handling and execution, catastrophe tends to follow. Emergency response is one of the worst areas to be sloppy in, but that didn't stop the London Ambulance Service from imploding with tragic results. On October 26, 1992, the LAS introduced a computer-aided dispatch system intended to automate call taking, patient location, and ambulance mobilization. Soon after launch, the system suffered extensive problems. Cube calls were lost, status messages failed to update reliably, and dispatchers struggled to allocate vehicles. It soon crashed, prompting partial reversion to manual procedures after just one day. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the service and the scope of its service area, even a brief window of delay had serious consequences. Up to 46 people died what could have been preventable deaths had ambulances reached them in a timely manner. Following these and the severe response delays across the capital, the service's chief executive, John Wilby, tendered his resignation. Days later, an external inquiry was launched, as well as an immediate increase in control room staffing support. The investigation found that because the LAS served millions of residents with hundreds of vehicles, when the new system attempted to computerize nearly every step rather than incrementally supporting dispatchers, it couldn't handle all of them, which magnified the unexpected weak points in the software. Among cryptocurrency enthusiasts, Mt. Gox is best known for two things, formally handling over 70% of global Bitcoin transactions and its catastrophic downfall. The exchange was done in by a one-two punch of software-related disasters. First, in 2011, a programming mistake in transaction handling logic caused the exchange to create outputs that were unspendable. At least 2,609 Bitcoins were effectively stranded due to a subtle error in how change was constructed. In other words, because the code produced invalid conditions, the coins could never be redeemed. This caused an estimated loss amounting to $8,000, over $300 million in today's Bitcoin prices. Fast forward to February 2014. Mt. Gox announced that it had lost roughly 850,000 Bitcoins due to a combination of hacking and internal weaknesses. About 750,000 of these lost coins belonged to customers, about 100,000 belonged to the exchange. At the time, the total value of the lost coins was pegged at around $480 million. The company's CEO, Mark Capellas, publicly apologized as the company filed for bankruptcy protection in Japan. By the end of the month, Mt. Gox's operations ceased. They found about 200,000 Bitcoins in an old Bitcoin wallet, but the sheer scale of the shortfall means that many of the creditors are still awaiting their payouts to this day. For a lot of critics of Bitcoin, they're pointing to this as saying, see, we told you so. Before dawn on August 21st, 2017, the destroyer USS John S. McCain collided with the oil tanker Alnick MC off the coast of Singapore in one of the world's busiest sea lanes near the Straits of Malacca. The Navy ship sustained a large hole on its port side hull. While 10 U.S. Navy sailors were initially reported as missing, it was later revealed that they perished due to the collision. Investigations by the Navy and the National Transportation Safety Board found that a series of configuration and control errors on the ship's integrated bridge and navigation system preceded the loss of steering minutes before impact. 
One year earlier, the USS John S. McCain had received a touchscreen steering and thrust control retrofit. While the interface was intended to make things easier, it ended up becoming a source of confusion for stressed operators who'd received insufficient training on how to use it. Moments before the crash, steering and throttle control were split between stations without clear crew understanding, and the ship began an uncommanded turn that the bridge team couldn't override or counter in time. These findings prompted some senior officers to be charged with negligent homicide, while some commanders were dismissed from the Navy. In addition to crew lapses and training shortfalls, the NTSB also concluded that the touchscreen system's design increased the likelihood of operator error. Two years later, the Navy moved to reintroduce physical throttles and simplify controls across the class. On March 10, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, a Boeing 737 MAX 8 bound for Nairobi, crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa Bole Airport in Ethiopia. None of its 149 passengers and eight crew members survived. Online air traffic reports stated that once it began its flight, the plane exhibited an unstable vertical speed. The findings of the accident investigation report supported this, stating that the plane took a 33,000 foot per minute nosedive due to erroneous commands executed by the plane's maneuvering characteristics augmentation system. The unprompted left-right deviation of the angle of attack values seconds after takeoff also played a role. Tragic enough on its own, the incident was made worse by the fact that it happened just five months after another 737 MAX 8 plane, Lion Air Flight 610, crashed in Indonesia and killed 189 passengers and crew. This prompted a worldwide grounding of the plane model. Families of the victims in the Flight 302 crash pursued compensation from Boeing under U.S. law. The manufacturer accepted full responsibility, acknowledging that the particular model had an unsafe condition and agreeing not to attribute blame to the airline or pilots. At this point, the 737 MAX's design had already been updated and the model had been deemed fit to return to active service. Fujitsu's Horizon system, introduced in UK post office branches in 1999 to computerize its accounting, generated unexplained shortfalls that the post office treated as evidence of theft or fraud by sub-postmasters. From 1999 to 2015, nearly a thousand cases of suspected theft and false accounting were brought to court, with many sub-postmasters being convicted and receiving jail time. Some found themselves in financial ruin after having to use their own funds to make up for the missing money and many had their relationships destroyed and turned to drugs. Worst of all, at least 13 people are believed to have taken their own lives in relation to the scandal. I never thought computer could make mistakes. The thought never crossed my mind. Over 500 sub-postmasters came together in 2017 to file a counter case against the post office. In 2019, the courts found that the system's errors could indeed cause the very discrepancies that were blamed on the sub-postmasters. As of June 2025, the post office has compensated more than 7,300 of them, but not all of them. Some of the bugs were actually detected years earlier. In 2006, a sub-postmaster detected a glitch in which non-physical stamp sales would be accidentally doubled, creating an accounting discrepancy. He brought this to the attention of the post office in Fujitsu, but was told that no action would be taken to correct the error. He had no idea how wrong they were. Now, when it comes to dangerous software glitches in medical equipment, few are more infamous than the Their Act 25. The radiation therapy machines created by Atomic Energy of Canada Limited experienced a series of malfunctions that led to at least six cases of radiation overdoses in different hospitals. In a nutshell, the machine's software allowed unsafe combinations of operating modes to be set during rapid keystrokes. On several occasions, the machines delivered extremely high doses in a fraction of a second, producing radiation burns and fatal injuries. The first incident took place in June 1985 at the Kennestone Regional Oncology Center in Marietta, Georgia. The 61-year-old patient, a woman receiving post-op electron treatment, received burns so severe that her breasts had to be removed and her right arm was rendered useless. Just a month later, a 40-year-old woman at the Ontario Cancer Foundation in Hamilton, Canada was bombarded with up to 85 times the regular amount of radiation in a single treatment session. In December 1985, a woman at the Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital sustained radiation burns from the machine, though she eventually recovered. Unfortunately, the patients in the next three documented cases didn't survive their ordeals. Previous Therac models had hardware safety mechanisms in place as preventative measures. These safeguards weren't replicated in the Therac 25 machines whose safety features relied solely on their software. The USS Vincennes was one of the guided missile cruisers deployed by the United States during the Iran-Iraq War, meant to protect oil tankers and other ships from becoming accidental casualties in the crossfire between two warring countries. 
Unfortunately, due in part to a glitch made possible by less than optimal software design, the warship itself ended up causing the deaths of 290 civilians. On July 3, 1988, the U.S. Navy cruiser fired two surface-to-air missiles that destroyed Iran Air Flight 655, an Airbus A300, mere minutes after it lifted off from Iran's Bandar Abbas International Airport. Among the Dubai-bound plane's passengers and crew, none survived. Findings from the subsequent investigation of the incident revealed that at the time, the Vincennes was engaged in combat with Iranian vessels in the Strait of Hormuz. Under the command of Captain William C. Rogers III, a seasoned military man with a reputation for aggressive tactics, the Vincennes misidentified the ascending civilian airliner as a descending F-14. The plane began lowering its altitude, and so I think it was an understandable accident. While the tragedy could be attributed to a variety of reasons, like the crew's lack of familiarity with the ship's Aegis fire control system, there were issues concerning the ship's combat information center displays. Critically, the identification friend or foe reading reported Flight 655 as Mode 2, military, instead of Mode 3, civilian. The Vincent's radar picked up a signal from the wrong tracking gate and thus gave an incorrect assessment. It wasn't a very happy day in the Gulf for us, that's for sure. 